Hi, this is Dr. Cooper with a lecture video for page one of the chapter 12 lecture notes for Accounting 752 at Towson University. In this video, we're going to be uh, looking at the components of protecting confidential information. Uh, this chapter is all about privacy and confidentiality of information that we collect in the course of business. Um, and we're specifically going to be looking at privacy protection of digital information, though paper-based information is also important. Uh, we will Our focus will be primary, primarily on digital information. Uh, so we're gonna do about 10 uh, pages for the lecture notes. And then I have a couple of uh, external videos from YouTube about uh, encryption and things like that that I want you guys to watch. If you have any questions or need assistance with anything, please feel free to reach out and let me know and I'll be happy to help. Uh, all right, so our first learning objective here from the book says, describe the controls that can be used to protect the confidentiality of an organization's information and the privacy of personal information collected from customers, suppliers, and employees. So the goal is to collect information in the course of doing business. And in doing so, we need to, uh, make sure we consider a couple of different things. One, following the law, because there are some privacy protection laws in place in the United States, and there are some very strict privacy protection laws in place in the European Union. So if you're doing business in Europe, you need to make sure that you are compliant with their stricter laws. Um, and then two, we wanna make sure that we still have the information available to us when we need to use it, but that we don't give access to unauthorized people or organizations. So we've got this uh, infographic here from the book. It's got the circle in the middle that says preservation of confidentiality and privacy. Um, and then we've got these four controls, things that we would have to do. And it's they come from the idea of internal controls over our financial information. We're just going to look at these specific controls for the privacy and confidentiality portion. Uh, so this first page, of the notes is something that you should definitely study for the mini exam that we'll be having on chapters 12 and 13 in the coming weeks. And if you don't know about that, go ahead and watch the introduction video, the first one that I made so that you can get up to date. All right, so here are the four controls that we're going to be talking about uh, in regards to this information privacy. So the first one is identifying and classifying the information that needs to be kept private. Uh, a lot of the time, the government identifies this for us so that we know exactly when it's to be kept uh, safe and um, we don't have to do a lot of judgment calls. But when you have information, there's a couple things you should make sure you think about. Do we need to have it for a genuine business purpose? And if we do need to have it, who needs to have it? And then how long do we need to keep it? Um and all of those questions will help you figure out the best way to keep the information safe. And of course, it's not gonna work 100%. There's always the chance that the information will get out. And so we'll talk a little bit more about incident, incident response later on. All right, the second control we have is once we've identified the information that needs to be kept safe, um, then we will use encryption tools to protect the information while it's in transit and it's storage. Um, there, we'll talk later about the encryption. It's basically just coding the information in a secret code that we can uh, decipher and read and use and process and then putting it back into encryption when it's in storage. Um, and that is actually a very effective tool in keeping the information safe and secure. Uh, the problem with encryption is that it cannot be used while you're actually processing or using the information. So once it's decrypted and available for humans to use, then it is um, at risk. All right, the third one we have here is training, which is seems obvious that if you don't train your employees on how to keep, which information needs to be kept safe and how to do it, it's not gonna happen. Now these training efforts even though they seem very obvious, are one of the things that cause a lot of problems. The training needs to be persistent and it needs to be ongoing. People don't remember everything you tell them the first time you tell them. I mean, believe me, as a teacher, I know. I sometimes have to tell people the same thing 
dozens of times before they finally understand and can incorporate it into their thought processes. So you need to continually train your employees and let them know that it's important for them to keep this information safe and secure. It's not just an exercise in compliance, meaning it's not just following the law. It's something that we're actually doing because we want to do the right thing. And this is how we're going to do it. And if you think, you know, and tell the employees, if you think that there's a problem or you think there's a better way to do it, come tell us so that we can make adjustments, monitor and evolve and update our processes. All right. The last one is the access controls. And uh, this has a lot to do with the software that you're using. So the first one is the information rights management. That's like a first, one of the concepts. And we use this at the university fairly well. Um, so when I log in to your student account, there are certain parts of your account that I can't see at all. For example, I can't see your um, billing account. I don't know anything about how much my students are being billed or how much they're paying or if they owe money or they have a refund. I don't know any of that. I can't even open the module. And so the reason that makes sense is because why would I ever need that for my job? I wouldn't. I can go in, I can see like your phone number and your grades. So I can do advising. I can see which classes you've taken at Towson. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, uh, because those are the kinds of things that I might need to like help advise you on what you're going to do going forward or get more information about your background. So I can be a better instructor. Um, but everything else is blacked out. And that leads me down here to the data masking. When I log into your account, I can see your contact information. And part of that is your social security number. However, even though I can see the field that says social security number, the number itself is blacked out. It's just X's instead of numbers. So it'll, I can see your name. I can see your um, phone number. But your birthday, your social security number, it's just all X's. And those X's are what we call tokenization. It's where you you mask over the actual information with some other character, in this case, an X. So there are modules that I'm blocked from accessing. And then there's also information within the modules I can access. Some of the information is blacked out. We've got these other two, data loss prevention. This is uh, just procedures and policies that you have in place to keep the information safe. We'll just learn about some of that as we go on. And then digital watermarks help you to um, verify that the information is um, from the place you think that it is. And we'll talk about some digital signatures and things like that as we go on. All right. So that's the end of page one. Come back in the next video for page two.